Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am an American living abroad in Switzerland. You may be wondering where Louis is in this video and the reason I'm doing it alone is because I'm going through my experience of the top 10 culture shocks that I've experienced as an American who has lived in Switzerland for the last four years. So if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you will have seen that I made a video like this, I think about three years ago, all about Swiss culture shocks. And it's one of our top videos, but I really felt like it was time to redo it. Now that I've had the opportunity to be living in Switzerland for four years, two of which were in Zurich, and now the last about two years I've been in Geneva, I feel like I have more of an experience to give a fair description of 10 culture shocks. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 things that really have surprised me and continue to now surprise me after living in Switzerland for four years. Some of these are more serious, significant differences, and some of them are just little kind of funny quirks that I've noticed along the way. So hopefully you find this interesting. If you are an expat or an immigrant living abroad in Switzerland, I'd love to hear your experiences in the comment section. And if you're Swiss, I'd love to hear if you agree or disagree with anything I said. So with that, Let's get into the video. So I'm gonna start with one that I've actually noticed recently. I go back to the US fairly often. I would say I go at least two or three times a year for a week, week and a half at a time. And I have actually noticed that it is much more difficult and much more expensive to buy high quality food in the United States. Now I think there's that old adage that Switzerland is the most expensive country in the world when it comes to food, and that is certainly true. But what I have noticed is that all of the food in Switzerland, kind of regardless of the price, is of a really significant quality. I've noticed this specifically now that I have a toddler, and trying to buy baby foods and cereals and things like that that are of a high quality is very easy in Switzerland. Now, when I've been back in the United States, I found that while you can access these things, they are at a significant, significant premium, which is such a shame because you want everybody to have the opportunity to eat well, to eat healthy. I've noticed this specifically with products that exist in both countries. So Fruit Loops or Cheerios for cereal, for example. If I buy the same product in Switzerland and in the United States, the quality is totally different, which is such a shame. I've noticed this with things like yogurt. If I want a yogurt that doesn't have artificial flavoring, artificial coloring, it's super expensive in the United States. And that's just generally the assumption of quality in Switzerland. So that's something that I think continues to surprise me every time I go back to the United States. And I'm really, really happy. And I feel very lucky that I have the opportunity to have food at a reasonable price, but is always a very high quality in Switzerland. Now to move on to one that's a little bit more lighthearted and silly. And this is twofold. I think it's it's the lack of small talk and the lack of people even kind of smiling when you make eye contact in the street in Switzerland. Something that I always like when I go back to the US. When I make eye contact with someone on the street, I think in the US it's just quite common to smile and nod. And in Switzerland, sometimes I find that when I do that, I met with somewhat strange looks. So that's something that has continued to surprise me over the four years. And I'll also say the lack of small talk. Anytime I'm waiting in a line in a grocery store in the US, in a post office, on a train, someone around you starts like a little bit of a conversation, which I always found very nice. I can anticipate the comments where people always say that Americans are so fake for this. And I really wanna disagree there because I don't think that either person on that exchange is expecting it to be more than what it is. It's just, you're sharing a physical space with this person, you're interacting with them because they're near you. And then it's just a little bit of a pleasantry in the day and nobody's expecting that it's going to be a lasting friendship or anything like that. I think it's just a little nice exchange that's intrinsic to American culture. And that's something that I think I missed a little bit, but or if you're on the street and I smile and the person doesn't smile back, I think that's still a little bit of a culture shock and something I'm still getting used to even after four years. Another culture shock for me in Switzerland, if you've been following the channel for a while, you will have seen me talk about this quite a lot, is the extreme language diversity in Switzerland. So of course the United States is an English speaking majority country and everything is de facto in English, which is totally different than Switzerland. It's such a small country, but there are four different languages three larger main ones that there's Swiss German, French, and Italian. And I find that even between each other, the Swiss sometimes are looking for the common language that they share. So my husband was on a sports team when he was in college and when they would travel around from people with different parts of Switzerland, they would have to find their common language. Often that would be French or even sometimes it would be English, which is not a common language in Switzerland. 
Switzerland. So I find that in Switzerland, I'm switching languages a lot. As you know, we are the traveling Swiss. We travel often. We go into the German speaking part. I have to switch back to German. And that's something that always trips me up, which is why I'm happy to bring up our sponsor of this video, which is Lingoda. Lingoda puts the power of learning back in your hands. You can book classes at any time. They're offered 24 hours a day, up to B2 or C1 in different languages, including Swiss national languages of French and German. I'm currently learning French. I'm trying to push myself as much as I can to be more fluent this year, so I'll keep you posted on my journey. What I love about Lingoda is that you can book those classes 24 hours a day, but I think my favorite feature is that it's not just an app where you're kind of answering questions a little bit passively. You're actively engaged in hour-long lessons with a maximum of five participants. So imagine how much speaking practice you're going to get with an hour with five participants. I find that it's really, really helpful and has been pushing me to speak. And I think in just the month or so that I've been doing it has really expanded my confidence, which I think is something I've really struggled and really, really need to work on. So if you're going to Switzerland, I think learning a little bit of French or learning a little bit of German is really something that could benefit you. I think specifically German, there's so much German speaking region in Switzerland and people will really appreciate if you go out of your way to learn a little bit. So go to Lingoda's website with code Alexis, you can get up to 35% off. I'd love to hear what your experience is. You can take an online test to see what level you fit into and get started right away. So check that out. The link is in the description and the code is on screen. Try Lingoda today for 35% off. So the next topic I'm going to cover is more of a significant one and that is the topic of healthcare. So I'm from the United States, as I think all of you now know, and a lot of great people have with the United States is of course to healthcare. You see a lot about it in the news and essentially in the United States, healthcare is very much in tie to your employer and your employment. If you're one of the lucky ones that has a large scale employer or a unionized employer that can offer good quality healthcare, you'll have the best experience with the system. But even if you're one of those lucky few, which I was, your experience is still gonna be much more difficult than I think you make it out to be. So whether or not your prescriptions are getting declined that your doctors have written out and you're arguing with insurance companies, you have to look up whether a hospital or specific doctor is in your network, never really knowing what your co-pays or premiums are gonna be when you go into a doctor's office. All of this was something that I just assumed was everywhere. And I just assumed that that was what it was gonna be like dealing with healthcare systems. When I moved to Switzerland, I was particularly nervous because Switzerland also has a private healthcare system where similar to the US, you have an insurance company provider, there are multiple different private ones. You pick your package and there's a different plan. It isn't a nationalized system like the UK or Sweden, it's more similar to the US in that front. But that I think is where the similarities stopped and where my culture shocks came in. I have personally never had to pay a copay. I've never even received a bill. My monthly premiums for my healthcare costs just are what they are. Anytime I've been prescribed prescriptions, I've never had to argue at the pharmacy to make sure that they're covered or have the doctor write a different prescription for a similar pill that is covered. I've never had any of that experience. And one that I think is a little bit more serious, but truly, truly was a culture shock to me and the most positive way was when our daughter was very young, she had a very serious health problem that required a long hospitalization and a surgery. I didn't receive a single bill for that. It was all totally covered in my healthcare plan, which is something that was so, so, so much of a shock, so surprising. I was even asking if we were going to receive a bill and just nothing. And I think that to me is a significant, significant culture shock that I am, you know, happy about in the most positive way. Another culture shock I have in Switzerland, and maybe this is because New York is just a little bit rogue in that way, but that is the intense rule following here. I think you can make an argument that that's why the society works so well, but I think it gets taken sometimes to potentially a little bit of an extreme. Someone once left the comment on this channel and my husband and I talk about it all the time. If this was you, please let me know below. And they said, there's a tiny police officer that lives in every Swiss person. And I don't think we've ever laughed so much at a comment because I think that's very, very true. I think I experienced this tremendously so when I lived in the Swiss German region, when I lived outside of Zurich. But I think I still to this day experience this when I live in Geneva, that people very much expect you to follow the rules exactly as they are written, even when sometimes I think there's some flexibility for bending. When I lived in the Swiss German region outside of Zurich and I would cross the street, even if the light was red and there's no cars and it's nighttime and somebody saw me, they would say something and tell me that that's forbidden to be crossing the street right now. And that's just something that I never really considered. If I cross the street, 
not at the crosswalk again, even if there's no cars coming. Those are two silly examples, but I've also noticed that you're not supposed to make noise or recycle on Sundays. And that's something that people take really seriously. There's a lot of little rules of the road that you'll notice when living in Switzerland. I think if you get a Swiss lease, you'll also see a lot of rules in there. And the Swiss people are very rule following. I recently heard my neighbor talking to my husband that I had left my mailbox open. I was carrying my daughter and going in the house with a lot of groceries and I must have forgotten to close my mailbox and that was something that bothered him and that's fine and I think it's just something that is really funny living in Switzerland even after four years how they follow rules and that's why their country is lovely and is the way it is but I think being from New York I always think there's a little bit of wiggle room and room in between the lines and it's just something I've never gotten used to I don't know that I'll ever really get used to, but I'm learning to live with it. Another one on the lighter end of things, and I said this certainly in the last Culture Shock video that I made, but three or four years later, I still agree with it. And it's still the opening hours in Switzerland. That's still a shock to me, particularly when I go back to the US and I need to pick up something at night and there's grocery stores open at midnight. That's just not something that exists in Switzerland. I think you can debate which way is better, whether or not it's good. But for me as a consumer, I like having stores open a little bit later. I think in Switzerland, generally, unless you're really in the center center of a big city, supermarkets will close at 7 p.m. during the week, maybe 6 p.m. on Saturday. They won't be open on Sundays at all. And that's the same thing for shops. I know for me, I loved using Sunday to do my errands. And in Switzerland, Sunday is very much a day to just relax, go on a hike or a walk with your family, not even really do gardening or, or recycling or any errands like that because you aren't really supposed to be making noise on Sunday, which ties back into the previous culture shock. But I think the, the open Opening hours is still something that always surprises me. And that's just something that is so ingrained in my head. I think in growing up in the United States, in New York, where you're used to things being open 24 hours a day, which is maybe the way more extreme example of this, but I do miss being able to get something a little bit later at night or on Sundays outside of just having a gas station as an option. So this next topic I want to talk about is now a little bit more of a serious topic. It is something that I talked about the video that I made three or four years ago when it started a little bit of a heated debate in the comment section. And I think it might start one again, but I'm gonna bring it up again because it's still something I feel very strongly. And I think I wanna bring up that Switzerland, I think despite maybe what you think about it, Switzerland is a very patriarchal country by nature and it still is. I'll start with the positives that since I've made that last video there have been some changes. So since I made that last video gay marriage is now permitted in Switzerland. It wasn't at the time of filming that last video. So there are some things in progress happening kind of moving more to an equitable society. But Switzerland I think still at its heart is a patriarchal country and what I mean by that is that the traditional family unit is what is heroed in Switzerland. So there is the male and female couple. They have their children. The wife typically is at home or it works at a much reduced rate and takes care of the children. And I think the society is generally set up with that assumption in mind. So I've noticed that more now that I have a child in daycare in Switzerland who is a toddler. She's going to be two years old. But even still, the daycare spots are extremely hard to come by for the public daycare, which is a little bit more affordable. So most people have their children in private daycares, which generally range in large cities like Geneva and Zurich to 180 francs a day. 180 francs a day means you need to be making tons of money to make that justifiable because that comes out to about 4,000 francs a month just of daycare costs. So with that cost alone, you're pushing a lot of people to stay home and you typically push the woman to stay home because typically she earns less when you look at the salaries between men and women in Switzerland. And I think that's the foundation of where a lot of this stems from. So you can see that very few women, I'll put some stats up on the screen, will ever work full time again after having a child. And I don't think they're properly incentivized to. I think you can see that in the declining birth rate. There's a lot of things that are working against them there, but some things that I've experienced personally, again, since filming that last video, is that when you think of Switzerland and Europe, I think you think of these extremely generous maternity leaves and Switzerland has something that actually would have been less than my employer in the United States would have offered me. So Switzerland has 14 weeks of paid maternity, which is amazing to offer something paid for everybody. But relative to Europe, that is extremely low and is much lower than the rest of Europe. So again, if you only have 14 weeks of paid maternity and then the daycare cost is going to be 4,000 or so francs a month. It's very difficult for women to look realistically at entering the workforce full-time. What I will say is that I've never felt unsafe as a woman in Switzerland. It's a very safe country. I've always felt respected by men in Switzerland. When you think of the negative examples of patriarchy, it's not in that sense, but I do think it's still a country that has that traditional family unit, traditional family nucleus, and it's a Christian country. And I think that that ecosystem of family drives a lot of things, which I think can often not be in favor of women. You can debate whether or not you think that women should stay at home with their children full time. 
but I think that women should have the opportunity to make the same as men, work if they want or stay home if they want. Um, and Switzerland doesn't really properly incentivize that. You have to really be kind of a superstar to be able to do both in Switzerland. Okay, go back and forth, ping pong between heavy and light. I'll go back to a silly one, which I think is very much again in favor of Switzerland. And this is something that I noticed recently when I went back to the US for the first time in a few months. And that is the kind of self checkout system and things being locked up in stores or the lack of that in Switzerland. So I was in a CVS in the US a few months ago and I noticed, I think almost half of the products in the CVS were behind lock and key. So you have to ask whoever's working there to get it for you. And then when you go to the self checkout station, every Everything is weighed, it takes a lot of time, they come back and check to make sure you're doing everything totally properly. And I was thinking about this when I was in Switzerland and I was in a store and I kind of just went through when I was doing all of my grocery shopping and I did the self-checkout station and it's just an honor system. There's nothing weighed, it doesn't tell you to stop, nothing is behind lock and key. I've never seen that in Switzerland. In fact, I've seen almost the pure opposite in Switzerland where when you're in the mountains sometimes there will be these self-service stations and there'll be no one manning it and there'll be a box sometimes that even has money and change in it. They're expecting you to put your cash in and make change and buy goods and no one's monitoring it. I think Switzerland as a society, there's much more trust in the people to do the right thing. There's much less theft. And I think that makes it a much more pleasant experience for the consumer. You don't feel like you're doing something wrong in this situation. Like anytime I'm in the US doing self-checkout, you feel like you're trying to steal something because the machine's always yelling at you and everything's behind these glass boxes that you want to buy. And it just puts a weird taste in your mouth when you're in that situation. So that's something that's a little bit of a culture shock that I've, I've noticed more and more recently the more I've gone back to the U.S. So that's something that I've been loving about Switzerland and I almost forgot existed until I went home recently. Another one is something I actually see that people talk about this in the like immigrant expat communities in Geneva and Zurich and I think that's how hard it is to make Swiss friends but I think what the culture shock is is that Swiss people from what I've noticed and I'm again not, nothing is for everybody so this isn't for all Swiss people but by and large what I've noticed in my circles and run-ins with Swiss people and I have a larger Swiss circle because my husband is Swiss is that the Swiss people tend to have very, very close social circles that aren't necessarily large, but they have their few friends that they're very tight with and aren't necessarily making friends much more easily. I think on the opposite part, when you're in the US, I think people have very large social circles that there's constantly people ebbing and flowing. Maybe they have those like nuclear few that they've known since high school or college or whatever, but they have some friends that they make in this job. They have some friends that they make in their workout classes or whatever. And I think people have much larger social circles in the US. I think they might be less close than in Switzerland, but I think in Switzerland, they have these very, very small, tight, social circles with people and they've generally known them since they were school age. I don't think that people in Switzerland as much tend to make close friendships later in life. I think in, in the US it was always something evolving. I think I was always making friends as I was in these different life phases. Of course you can make friends in Switzerland. I'm not saying that you can't but I do think it's something that by and large that the Swiss have their couple friends and it's just the way it is. So the last one I'm going to end it on and I expect that this might start a little bit of debate in, in the comment section, but I almost mean it to be funny. And I think the culture shock is the quote unquote lack of patriotism that I see in Switzerland. So you can you can flip that sentence and it can be the very outward patriotism that I see in the US, but that's the opposite in Switzerland where I don't see everyone having Swiss flags on their home. I don't think that like the, the Swiss National Day is as big of a deal as the 4th of July. People don't get as crazy about it. But something I've noticed now more that my child is in daycare and starting to be school age is that it isn't embedded within like the social structures and the schooling system where when I was a kid, you had to pledge allegiance to the the flag in the morning. I think someone in the comment section said that sounded like North Korea, which made me laugh. And there were flags in all the classrooms and flags on the school building and in the daycares and everything like that. And I haven't noticed any of that in Switzerland, especially now that I have a child. It's just something that I'm not noticing that my daughter is having to learn like the Swiss national anthem, or I don't know if there is a Swiss Pledge of Allegiance. I don't think so. There, there's nothing similar like that in, in Switzerland. So that's something that's very different. And I think I, I noticed it more as my child started to going to, to school where even my daughter has some clothes with like American flags on it and stuff. And I think it's really common in the US, but I don't see that very much in, in Switzerland at all. But I don't think that's because they don't love their country. They just haven't been maybe programmed even that you are in the US as a way to display it so outwardly. It's such a something that's still a little bit of a shock to me and still something very, very funny that I, I've noticed. Okay, so that was it. Those were the updated 10 culture shocks that I can do after having lived in Switzerland and Zurich and Geneva for 
the last four years. So I hope you found that interesting. If you want more videos like this of me sharing my experience of living in Switzerland as someone that's not originally from here, I'm happy to do that. We have a lot more travel content coming towards you this year. I know so many of you are going to be traveling in 2024. If you need resources, we have a ton available on our website. Just check them out at thetravelingswiss.com. You can get itineraries, you can book consultations, you can pick your train pass for free. There's lots of different things that we have for you there. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this interesting. I really enjoyed thinking about it and filming it. So thank you again, guys, so much. It's always a pleasure and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.